Yeah, yeah, yeah. Show me some. Show me some. Show me. Show me some. Show me. Show me some. Welcome back to another episode of Don't Suck at Sales. Listen, this thing that we're going to talk about today was something that I really sucked at when I started mm -hmm. um, doing um, insurance sales. And I really hated it when people would tell me like, well, I'm going to think about it and go look at my bills. And would they say it I'll just like that? <laughs> it sounded like that. And I was like, you could like feel my face getting all red and like mad and <laughs> Like, and, and I was like, I, what should I say right there? And you know, it's not what you say right there. It's what you should have said earlier on, right? Yeah. So hold on. The, the name of this episode, let me see. This is going to be called, do we really need it? Do we really <laughs> need it? Okay. Because by asking the right questions, these clients are going to decide that they really need it. Yeah. If we don't ask the right questions, they're going to say they need to think about it. I can't afford it, whatever the case may be. So I'm going to hand it over to John because this is really his specialty is, is how to dig in. Some people call this the financial fire drill. Some people call it fact finding. Um, I don't know. There's probably other names for it, but. Yeah, you just, you just dig it in, right? And it's kind of like the, the, I don't know. Like I knew that once, once I had this information it gave me the confidence to then tell them that they need it. Anytime I was trying to get personal with them, I would always ask for permission. Um, so even on something like this, I would just transition be like, hey, Miranda, really quick. Um, like, I, I just want to ask you a few personal questions because I want to let you know whether this is a little bit more of a luxury or necessity. Um, and if it's uh, a luxury, I'll be the first person to kind of share just that. And we will end this really quick if need be. So again, would it be all right if I just asked you a few personal questions? All right, so again, I'm asking permission to kind of dig a little bit deeper with them. And so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about just some of the questions and why we're asking them. And I think the first one, it's really good to kind of get into like the value of their home. So hold on, how much they owe, the value of their home, like how much they could sell it for, and then the amount of equity that they have. This is super simple. It's easy. And you're just going to do it in that order. Like, oh, so Miranda, I see here that you owe $225,000. Is that still accurate? Yep. Okay, cool. If you had to sell the house tomorrow, what do you think it'd sell for? And then whatever number she gives me, I'm just going to kind of accept that, right? And then what I'm going to do with that number, I'm saying, oh my gosh, okay. So let's say it's $225,000 and you could sell it for three fifty. dollars I'm like, awesome. So you have, you have $125,000 in equity. At the bare bones minimum, we want to make sure that we're we're covering that. So I'm going to use that at the end if I need to. Um, another, another area that I think is really important um, is when we're asking for their income. I think it is an, a really important thing that we have to ask, Miranda, and which sounds like, which sounds less aggressive. I'm going to ask you two different ways. Way number one, uh, here's number one. Miranda, uh, how much money do you make? Okay. None of your beeswax. <laughs> right. Or how much do you make per year? Uh, but if I'm since I'm tying it to life insurance, I'm going to kind of ask it in this light. Hey, Miranda, if you didn't make it home yesterday, you passed away, how much money every month would stop hitting the checking account on your behalf? So which one seems a little bit more subtle, a little bit less abrasive, a little bit less aggressive, a little bit even kind of like less personal? Mm -hmm. right so which do you like better do you like one or two one yeah, how much well, money do you make per month or two you know if god forbid you didn't make it home yesterday and you passed away how much money every month would stop hitting the checking account on your behalf yeah no um, I mean, when you're ahead. tying it to like the reason you're there right is talking about life insurance option right it's the same thing with, when talking about bills it's like i remember when i was new people would be like i don't want to tell you about my bills and i was like just like that yes but, I, <laughs> if I, but if i was like john listen if if like you weren't here anymore like what bills would jessica be left with to pay on her own mm. it's the same deal right and all of a sudden because it's tied to insurance they're not going to get pissy with you right Right. But if you're like, what kind of, what are your bills? <laughs> so, like over there. It's just, it's not why you say it, how you say it. Right. No, it's good. And I think that brings us to another one. Like uh, speaking of a bill, insurance, what I always wanted to do, Miranda, I just remember in the very beginning, 
I was just so afraid of people having life insurance, mm-hmm. like especially like people out here, like there's some, there's some big policies. I remember kind of, you know, meeting with families and they have a million, two million, five million dollars in coverage. And I'd look at it and be like, all right, well, look, you know, your home's a million dollars. You have $5 million in coverage. You make $250,000 a year. Like you don't need this. Um, you know, and I would, I would always tell people that, and I would always get so nervous asking people the insurance. Now, the one thing I've found is this, it's really the mentality and the way that you approach it. Um, I love people that have insurance because, um, they're well-informed and they care about their family and they're going to buy more. Uh, I also love the people that don't have any insurance at all. Why? Because, well, no one's educated them properly. And I have the opportunity to do that, to ensure that they can get their family coverage. So, I don't care if you have it or if you don't, I love you, I guess. You're right. So just always going to take that approach. Go ahead. So one of the things that really helped me when I was learning this is knowing that things had to go in a box, right? Like I was always told like, okay, if they have money that's in savings or they have life insurance, it goes into a box, right? And people compartmentalize this stuff. So I thought it might be helpful for us to talk about what those boxes are so people can learn how to put things into them (laughs) that's good that's that's really good do you want to do that now let's do it all right so go ahead I'll let you kind of start the way here okay all right Uh oh now he's handed me the okay the steering wheel all right so one of the things like there's burial right that's one thing that people might will buy a separate individual policy for burial final expense is what it's called it's not really what the, what necessarily plan you use for certain things. It's what they want to use that money for that's important, yep. right? So b- burial or final expense, that would be my first one. Cancer policies. Cancer policy. Right. There's another one. Um, how about critical illness? Critical illness? How about... Um, how about paying off a home? We call that mortgage protection, there you right? Go. But it's it's a term policy or p- perhaps even a whole life policy that's taken out to cover a mortgage. People will think that that's completely different than one that they've taken out for another reason, because it is. When somebody dies, we want to make it as easy as possible for people to understand where this money goes, right? This one's for burial. This one's for this. This. How about how about this. just how about simple life insurance? Right. Um, you can kind of like, again, it's, it's all life insurance or it's up, but we're naming it something specific that they can kind of like hone in on to be able to help them understand, put their head, put their head on the pillow at night, knowing that, Hey, my family's protected because here's the plan of what this money is going to be used for. What else, buddy? I mean, again, life insurance, or you could even call it income replacement, right? Uh, what else? You know, um, accidental insurance, accidental death insurance is something, disability insurance, but accidental death insurance is really cool because it's really inexpensive and it sometimes can get um, the client up to the number that they want, that they can't afford of a traditional life insurance policy that would play out by like natural causes or accident. And man, like accidents are the ones like when someone has a health problem and you know, it's coming, like you have some time to plan, don't you? Yeah. most of the time but the accidents are the ones that just come out of nowhere and like yeah it sucks man no, you're, like it you're always right. sucks but that is like the hardest ones to recover from is when you have no time to plan and then we got disability um we got retirement where we can help them right there's a lot of policies that will kind of build substantial cash value when you're getting into the indexing indexing universal life policies um we have annuities there's so many different areas but I, what did we just list off? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's more. There's more of them. But the point is, is that when you are getting ready to meet with the family, like just create that checklist for yourself and see how many of those that they have. And it, it's insane. Like, oh, and you could even ask them, who do you have your cancer policy with? And how much coverage do you have? They might say nothing. Well, a light bulb's going off in their head. Who do you have your critical uh, uh, illness policy with? No, or who do you have your burial policy with that covers your funeral and all of your final expenses? Who do you have your mortgage protection with? So what we're doing is we're just kind of segregating these out 
and really getting the kind of client to think about it as well. So I'm glad we did that little bit of exercise, but when you kind of meet with the family with that mentality of here are all the different ways that I can help them. And just as long as you're kind of asking those questions, you'll really get the client thinking. And I want to go back to um, the quality of questions with insurance, Miranda, uh, just in lieu of time here. Um, but insurance is a big one, right? And so that's kind of where I was going with that is, is I used to be afraid of people. Now I love it. Now I just either way, I love it. But insurance, I would always kind of walk through like this progression. And the the part of the progression that I would walk through is like, all right, so Miranda, insurance, um, let's start with your auto first. Uh, how much do you pay a month for your auto insurance? <laughs> You know, I don't know that. Question. <laughs> you know, I know. Okay, but I'll make up a number like $400 a month. <laughs> Miranda's got that like cut rate, like general insurance that um, <laughs> I pay where, where you yearly. have like six DUIs in your past. No, we, I have four cars <laughs> and we pay yearly and different ones. So here, listen. <laughs> That's so funny. No, I, I don't know. I think I pay like 150 bucks a month for, for like, our home, um, both of our cars, uh, her ring. Um, there is like a, there's, uh, there's like a life insurance, but whatever. It doesn't matter. I was just picking on you. But um, okay. And then how about um, how about any life insurance? Do you have any life insurance? Mm -hmm. Okay. And how much coverage do you have? Mm, 250. 250,000? Yeah. Okay. And what was the original intention when you put that policy on yourself? Just for like my family, like if something happened to me, maybe to pay bills and stuff. Okay. You just wanted to make sure that everyone was okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for income replacement then? Sure. Okay. Perfect. All right. So like that, like just always go through that progression because we want it out there, Miranda, don't we? Because at the very end, the last thing that we want them to do is what? Oh, well, I'll just, I have this policy through work that's $250,000. I'll just go ahead and use that for the mortgage. Thank you so much for educating me. No, they need that policy. They need so much more. 90% of families that we sit with either don't have enough coverage um, or any at all. So they don't have enough or any at all. So it's our job to help out nine out of the 10 families that we sit with. Extremely important that you go through that just so they don't have that out at the end of it. Does that make sense, bud? Mm -hmm. Okay. And then um, the the last thing is like check when you get into their finances and um, checking savings, 401k, IRA, like I would just always kind of like checking, hey, do you keep anything meaningful in your checking um, or is it more of a rolling average? Um, savings, do you keep anything meaningful in there or, or is it more of a rolling average? The reason I'm, I want I want to let them out. If they don't want to tell me, I don't want them to feel uncomfortable saying, well, I'm not going to give you that. They'll just simply, I'm giving them the out saying it's a rolling average. And so I would always kind of set it up that way. But again, I'll ask the same way, Mer, is like, hey, how much do you keep in your checking account? <laughs> it's, it's, that's, a, that's a very aggressive way to ask it. So I want to let them out if they're not comfortable with me. So again, good way to kind of check too how good you are with trust. So, hey, um, checking, do you keep anything meaningful in that? Or is it just more of a rolling average? Rolling average. Don't ask them how much the rolling average is. Let it go. That just means that they don't want to tell you. Saving, same question. So I think that those are really good ways to kind of go through that fact finding, that financial fire drill. Those are some really good quality questions that you guys can ask. Yeah, I like too about income is kind of like using it the exact same way as we talked about um, earlier. Listen, John, if you were to pass away, like, um, does Jessica have anything like in like your IRA savings checking, like anything? kind of substantial sitting in there for her to use the to fall back on perfect and and it's the same thing as because I'm tying it to death like people they're cool with it mm -hmm. right and like I've never got yelled at ever since I started doing that like it, that was it <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't get yelled at for asking personal I get, questions I can ask whatever I want now no I'm <laughs> right. right I love it all right well listen if this was meaningful and it helped you, hit like, hit subscribe, click the buttons all around the, the, the video, the page. Depends on okay. what where they're watching it, I think, is where that button would be. So yes. you're right. smart enough to figure it out. <laughs> so, thanks, y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Show me some. Show me. Show me some. Show me. Show me some. Show me.
Show me some.